Greetings everyone, and welcome to this Mortal Coil. In my last two videos, we explored the definition of trauma in our ACEs score, and how to recognize the counterbalance to trauma, which is how resilient you are. Today I would like to speak to you about self-reflection and what that means to someone beginning to heal from trauma. I had a conversation just today with a coworker of mine about abuse cycles and why it is that some people continue the cycle, why others have the fortitude to break it. I believe what separates the hamster and the wheel from the adventurer standing at the fork in the road is the process of self-reflection. But before I begin, the obligatory disclaimer. I am not a health practitioner. I hold no license or degrees except those given to me by force in my youth. As you probably guessed by now, I enjoy looking at the root of words and their definition to discover exactly what they mean. So let's take a moment to define reflection, shall we? Reflection, the throwing back of light without absorbing it, an image seen in a mirror or shiny surface, a thing that is a consequence of or arises from something else, serious thought or consideration, an idea about something, especially one that is written down or expressed. Now that we know what that word means, Let's reflect on how that word applies to abuse victims and trauma survivors. In my previous video, What is Trauma?, I briefly discussed the adage that time heals all wounds and why I believe that this is only half-truth. Through time and the healing process, it is essential for us to use self-reflection as a coping mechanism and as a means to understanding what it is that we experienced earlier in life. The act of reflection causes one to look deeper at the hidden meanings and reasonings behind our actions, thoughts, feelings, and reactions. It is completely natural to fear the thing that is unknown, and the negative emotions we express through triggering events is one such unknown. For example, one abuse victim has a strong fear and hatred for a specific shade of blue. One might find this irrational, but through careful, consideration, and self-reflection, we can find that the reason behind this fear is due to the fact that they were abused by someone wearing a blue jacket. Now their mental association to the color blue is a triggering event, and without the understanding of why, it becomes a fear. Self-reflection allows us to begin detaching those negative associations, and by doing so, quickens the healing process. Those of us unwilling or unable to self-reflect continue along the path of abuse. They hit their child without knowing why, or they have violent outbursts, or emotionally neglect their children or other people around them without hesitation because that is how they were raised. Without self-reflection, there is no breaking of the cycle of abuse because to them, there is no other way. There is only fear because everything is unknown. If you are a survivor and are listening to this now, consider yourself one of the few fortunate ones that either have or will break the cycle of abuse. By looking inward and recognizing that there is a problem, you can then begin to look outward for a solution and then ultimately a resolution. I attribute my survival 100% to self-reflection, though without degrading the wonderful assistance that I have had along my path, but because I was aware enough to begin the act of self-reflection I sought others who could mentor me through the healing process. And this reflection never stops. Anytime I slip up, anytime I have a break, anytime I feel that I am losing the fight, anytime that I act, think, react in a negative way, it is self-reflection time. The who, what, when, where, and how of trauma healing. Who is doing this? What am I doing? When did this feeling first arise? Where is this stemming from? How can I change my behaviors, my thoughts, my actions, my reactions? This process used to take days. I would lock myself away, meditate, write some crappy poetry, play music, read self-help and spiritual books, and try to focus on the act of reflection and positive creative outlets. But just like any muscle, it gets stronger and faster and with practice you begin counteracting the negative thoughts, acts, and reactions before they take place. This is what the Buddhists call mindfulness. 
being aware of your present by understanding your past and controlling your future. Everyone's method is different. There is no catch-all to self-reflection. I found that writing while being surrounded by nature helps me, whereas another person would enjoy talking to and being surrounded by their friends. Whatever your method, find the time to reflect, look deep inside, bring that to the surface, and find the answers to the unknowns that keep you from having a good night's sleep, from having meaningful relationships, going out in public, and those that keep you from having self-worth. It is not an easy task, and with anything that is worth doing and doing well, it takes work. It takes being strong enough to face your fears, to relive those horrid events that shaped you as a child or young adult. It takes being able to look at yourself in the eye and say, I love you. This is not your fault. But I have to take responsibility for it or lose myself to it. Smile and happy reflecting. Please like comment, subscribe, and share to those who could benefit. Together, we can find a cure for this disease.